Greetings, everyone, and welcome to R. Kelly Appeal TV, where we talk about what's going on in the appeal case of Robert Sylvester Kelly, where it's headed, where it's been, where it may be going. And one thing that I would like to share uh, today is that if you are interested in the uh, Cash App information, it's in the description box below. We're going to be gifting three lucky people a cash app award for just being a part of the R. Kelly Appeal TV. And we have a special guest and we are um, going to be talking about business and how business affected Robert Sylvester Kelly's life, um, what he should have done and what he should not have done um, that the media was able to take action on and just push his life in a different direction than what he uh, probably wanted for himself. So we have our parent organization of our Kelly Appeal TV, which is Emerald Mystery Radio. We have been a part of the radio segment since 2009. And we are here today with the segmenter um, owner. <laughs> hey, Emerald Mystery Radio, how are you today? Hey, uh, pretty good. Grateful to be here today. How are you? I'm um, awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here on R. Kelly Appeal TV. So, um, you know, we're both into business development and, um, you know, that is the new way to handle business in corporate America today. So when we talk about Robert Sylvester Kelly, let's look at some of the things that we can learn from him in business. So I'm going to let you start off with the conversation and share about who you are and um, how business development is a part of your life. Well, I am uh, currently going to college for business administration and human resources. Uh, so when we talk about R. Kelly, you know, I'm a big fan of the R. Kelly Appeal TV and looking at some of the ways that he conducted his business realm, you know, it kind of stood out to me. Uh, one big thing I noticed is how he would mix it's kind of business with pleasure. That's one thing I feel if you are having a company or if you're, you know, in the realm of business, it's never good to mix anything that's, you know, based off of relationships with your business um, because, if a person drops out or, you know, you, you never want to get emotional about it. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I do. I do understand. But here's the question I have for you as a human being and as being someone as big as Robert Sylvester Kelly, the king of R&B, how would you keep the emotional part of it out of the whole situation? Because he is an emotional icon. You know what I mean? I think he is the actual face of emotion. True. Yeah. I mean, his songs are amazing. That would be difficult. I mean, in that big of a position, um, determination and dedication. I think those would be two of the biggest key focuses because, I mean, especially during the time when he first came out, um, it was a lot. So I could see how that would be really difficult. Mm -hmm. um, but really focusing on the music, you know, really focusing on what, because it was really about the community, you know, and I guess really focusing on that more than the females. <laughs> but he was, he was always in the studio. He was always in the studio. He was always giving of his time. Like he said, 30 years, Emerald. It's like 30 years of my life was dedicated to being the best at what I did. Every song that I created, it had some significant meaning. He even made babies from 90s till 2000 off of his music. And his music is such an iconic uh, like I said, it's like the face of emotion. And and so I want to get some of the commenters' views on how they feel about R. Kelly being, you know, 
that face of music. And yes, I understand to stay focused, to stay generated on what it is you're doing. That is important. Um, but you have to, you have to move the crowd. And you can't be so far away from the crowd as an icon to not be able to sit down with them and talk about struggles, talk about daily, you know, defeats, talk about, you know, how it's, uh, how it feels to lose a loved one. You know what I mean? What's your take? Yeah. So, so, so when you talk about business and, and, and focusing on the aspects of it. He really and truly did that. I truly believe that it was the people that were around him. So can you share about the importance of your team in business? And, you know, like you were talking about the middleman being removed so that the corporate in entities can make money and it all stay together. You know, can you talk about that? Yeah, uh, your team is everything in business. You know, having a good communication uh, with your team can really, I'm sorry, having a good communication with your team can really, uh, set the, the foundation to how productive you're going to be. So when it comes to music, you know, it's the same thing. You need a good team. And I do feel like there were some people that were on R. Kelly's team that weren't the best. Um, because if they were, you know, there were a lot of things that did occur that wouldn't have even gone that direction. You know, for example, the whole Aaliyah thing. Mm -hmm. I feel like that was more of a propaganda or a pull to get more attention on both of the both artists. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there's other ways that that could have been done, you know, that wouldn't have put R. Kelly in such a bad lighting, if you know what I mean. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we love Aaliyah and we love everything that she represented when she was here on the planet and all that she gave to us. Um, but I do understand what you mean, that R. Kelly should have been more... Um, not so quick to say, yeah, let's do this. Let's go ahead and fake a marriage and pretend this is this to get more ratings, to get more money, to do what we need to do um, because it came back to hurt him in astronomical ways. Now I wanna share something with you. Um, it's a lyric of a song that he had written um, and it's called Suffering. And he talks about having a mansion surround, surrounded by gates, Maybach and a Rolls Royce sitting in my driveway, got a big old yacht made of gold and cherry wood. Now you may look at me and think that everything is good. Well, I may be smiling like I'm having a good time, but if you look in my eyes, you will see way down deep inside, I'm suffering. I'm suffering, I'm suffering, I'm suffering, oh yeah. So he was talking and telling us, at this time when he was making this song, and I don't know if you can, um, Emerald, if you can Google for me when this um, song was written. I want to know what was going on in his life right then and there. Was he, you know, really suffering? I mean, how can you suffer with so many good things around you? You got yachts and Rolls Royces and all the material possessions that a man can have in your life what do you feel about that well even though you can have all of that stuff that's you know the glitz and the glamour do you really have what you longed for what you started it for you know because back i mean he has been a singer since the 90s so mm -hmm. You know, when you first start something, you start with a goal or a motivation. And it's like, has that stayed consistent this whole time? Has it been, is he really fulfilled in his career? Mm -hmm. You know, has he accomplished all the goals 
that he wanted to accomplish for himself. Not, I'm not talking about, you know, breaking the world record or, or the charts or, you know, I'm talking about him as, as a person. Is he where he wants to be? So even though, you know, we're from the outside looking in, you know, mm-hmm. seeing all the glitz and the glamour, you know, would he trade his place as a famous singer for just having a regular lifestyle? That's a really great question. I mean, and I do believe back in the 90s when he came out with the song Trade in My Life, that was him saying that he wanted to go back to the regular mundane everyday person that he was in Chicago before all of this fell on his lap. But so many people wanted to hear more and and wanted more and wanted more money. So they forced him into this glitz and glamour lifestyle. And now as we continue on with the suffering R. Kelly lyric, it says, I got everything a man could want, but ever since my baby's been gone, I've been suffering. Well, I got so much land. I told you I could build a city. I've been all around the world and party with women that show up that's sure enough pretty. There's been times when my luck couldn't get no better, but though my sun may shine, I got stormy weather. Well, I may be smiling like I'm having a good time, but if you look in my eyes, you see way down deep inside, I'm suffering, I'm suffering, I'm suffering, y'all, I'm suffering. Okay, so when when we talk about you know, him losing his baby, you know, my, my woman's gone. He said he needed to learn to love himself first before he could even extend love to this person. He calls his other half because he's not able to share that love because he's so super emotional. What do you think? Well, I really feel, yeah. I agree with that. And I really feel like we should, as fans or as, you know, supporters, uh, not just talking about R. Kelly, artists in general, I feel like there are times where we need to give them a break, (laughs) you know, because they're human too. And as you can hear in the song, even just listening to the lyrics, you can hear the pain and, and, you know, because we are from the outside looking in, we're not able to, you know, uh, see how their mental health is. We're not able to see how their physical health is. We're just hearing the song. You know, we're just going to the concerts. We're just, you know, able to, if they choose to write a post or if they choose to update their fan base a little bit on what's happening in their everyday life, then that's what they choose to do. But we have to understand that celebrities, artists, they're regular people too. You know, they're behind the, the, music or behind whatever craft that they're doing if they're an actor they're human too they're just like us and we have to give them more space to go through what they need to go through you know if they just lost a loved one we have to give them space if they just if they're going through anything physical uh, with health issues, we have to give them space. If they're having depression issues, we got to give them some time. And um, I have heard some artists, you know, where they say, I'm taking a break for this amount of time to get myself together. I'll be back. You know, do you think that more artists should do that? And do you think it'll pay off in the long run? Absolutely, I do. Um, what are your views, commenters? I want to get your input on this as well, because we never really asked about R. Kelly's mental health during the time that he was in his high celebrity status. I mean, was he even going to counseling? Um, again, did you get the date of this, um, of when suffering was recorded? I never heard this song before. I don't even know what it sounds like, um, with music. I'm going to go and listen to it after the podcast, but let me finish the lyrics. Hey, I got a private jet. It takes me anywhere I want to go. I'm getting big paychecks from all my sold out shows. 
I'm on top of the world living like a boss until that girl up and laid me off. Well, you may look at me like I'm having a good time, but help, but hey, but if you look at my eyes, you see way deep down inside that I'm suffering. So, so I want to let you, um, to know that he was going through some things and he was reaching out to his fans and he was actually saying that he had all this, but it still didn't make him happy. And no woman, Robert, no woman will make you happy until you're able to love you, until you're able to understand that you matter. Not the R. Kelly that everybody knows, but the man inside that Andrea Kelly stated, you know, one person was the sweetest man he could be that deep down inside Robert that nobody could change because you already understand what this thing is all about. Um, Emerald, you have anything to say? Uh, no, you, you hit the nail on the point. I mean, yeah, you have to love yourself before you're able to love anybody else. Yes. <clears throat> So did you find the year this um, was was made, published? Yes, it was in uh, 2015. So 2015. So what was going on in R. Kelly's life in 2015? I know he might have been um, going through, again, the the propaganda of being part of a whole sex cult thing and all of this other stuff. And I know he was facing that because, you know, it seems like it never let off since 2008. It never stopped going for him. And, you know, we were talking about even in business development, you know, being, keeping business separate from pleasure. That's a very important thing to do as a regular human being. You can do that because you can go home to your private house and then get up and go to work from eight to four or three to 11 or where, whatever time you do. But you can separate your personal life from your private life, but be a celebrity and walk out to Walmart at 12 in the, in the morning Someone's going to recognize you no matter <laughs> if it's just the the cashiers in the store. You know what I mean? They're going to recognize you. Mm -hmm. So what are your okay. views on that? I mean, how can how can we help our celebrities become more understanding that they do need to take that quality time for themselves? Well, I mean providing the support um the for example you know everything that you're doing is supporting our kelly you know letting them know that they're not alone and for us to understand that they're human they're human being <laughs> you know um and to just give them space when they need it because everybody goes through different things in life you know mental health is very important for everyone and yeah i just feel like once we get past that you know understanding that they go through the same issues that that a regular person can um but they just have different ways to handle it I guess like you said like you know going to the store or we go to the store but we're not we may not be as recognized as they are or you know um but still the similar things you know yeah now we talked earlier today before we got on the recording about the me too movement and I did say that I was not going to subject my uh community here at R. Kelly Appeal TV to that. Uh, however, I truly understand how important the Me Too movement is um, when it comes down to individuals who are truly, truly domestic violence against. Now, like I said, you can even go back into the archives of, you know, the racist show All in the Family when we were growing up in the 60s and the 70s and how 
Edith Bunker was unable to work because Archie was the man of the house. He was the controller. He was the, you know, narcissistic uh, bigot that he was when he played that character. So the Me Too movement, I feel, should have been there for those women, not women who are being subjected to, you know, someone who they feel they're going to take down as a bullying threat to a man who has shown and proven over the course of his lifetime that he is not the monster that people continue to keep wanting to taint and title his name as. What are your views about that? Well, when it comes to the the Me Too movement, yes, it's a voice for women who have no voice or who it took a long time for them to get a voice because of how, you know, traumatic their situations were. But at the same time, you have people that take advantage of it um, because they know it's out there. They know it exists. And it's a, it's an easy attention grabber, which is horrible. <laughs> that's, that's not good at all. But I guess it's in what you want to put your attention into. You know, it's kind of like you can feel when something's authentic or when you can feel when something is real um, and how they're explaining it. But it, I don't know, it's kind of like a catch-22 because even a person that's lying or faking it, you can feel like it's something that's real. So right. I'm in the middle on right. that one. And that's like, and you are a strong Johnny Depp fan, okay? <clears throat> I know you're a strong Di Johnny Depp fan. So how did it feel to know that the the Amber Headley or Amber, I forget her name, whatever, that lady, how did it feel to hear that she lied about the things that she said about this man? Like, what what are your views about that? Because that's related to R. Kelly as well. Because those women on the docu series, they lied and then came back and and falsified the lie. They perjured themselves on the stand. Yes, is exactly what she did. When I heard it, I was just like, "Wow!" I'm the type of person where I don't like to make a conclusion until I hear both sides of the story. And it turns out that basically everything Amber said against Johnny Depp is turning out to be lies and extremely exaggerated. And it's just, it's funny. <laughs> it's funny in a way, but then at the same time, it's upsetting and it can make you very angry because there are women that go through that abuse. There are women that go through sexual abuse, mental abuse, emotional abuse. And when you have these stories that are exaggerated for money, like in the R. Kelly case, it just, it puts a bad lighting on women who actually go through it. Then it turns into the boy who cried wolf scenario. Well, are you even telling the truth? Are you even, are you sure this happened to you? Or now it's like the women who have gone through it have to jump through more hoops to prove that they're being abused and it's just like, well, is it even worth it in the end anyway? Like, I've been going through it this whole time, and I have to do even more just to prove that this man is doing this to me. Well, he's... Just because mm -hmm. celebrities are making it a joke. Right. And that's why I say on Appeal TV here with our Kelly Appeal, you don't sit and report something 10 years ago because it's going to be harder to report it. You, you, you call the police right now, you know, d domestic violence cases, at least 85% of them do not go through the process of trial because most women are babied into, oh, I love you. And 
Oh, I won't do it again. And then they drop charges. Well, when you drop charges, your name is on the police roster of people who may not be as forthcoming as say they should be because you didn't go through with the case. The criminal justice system is clogged with domestic violence cases that refuse to go through. And then you don't even, now these are just the, the cases that are reported. We don't even know the statistics on the cases that don't go reported. Right. And now we bring well, our children into the situation. And now these narcissistic men can now control the women and the children. And it's a never ending cycle until something horrific happens. And then they say, oh, or the neighbors say, I knew something was going on. Report, report now. That's the only way I believe the Me Too movement could ever be a success is if you report now, you have the sperm in you right now, you have the torn clothes with the body, um, um, you know, with uh, the fingerprints on it, you, you can tell that this really happened to you the day it happens. It's alive then, but it dies each day that you allow it to continue to foster and become something that is further and further away from your truth. And so then what happens? We begin to belittle ourselves now because the next time it happens, no one's going to trust and believe in what we're saying. So ladies, gentlemen, young children, report, report, report. It's never too late. I understand that. Andrea Kelly always says there is no expiration date on my um, healing. That sounds good, but that's too long, Andrea. It's too long. If it happens today, you report it today. You feel me? Well, in some instances, it is that easy. And, you know, I really, I salute the women that are able to do that. But of course, when you look at something, there are two sides to the spectrum. So of course, you, you have you have females who are afraid. You know, you have females who just are scared of what could happen, even the use, um, because you know, it's just that's a whole thing within itself. But yes, you should definitely report it when it happens. But, you know, if you are a person that's scared or that, you know, is afraid of what the outcome could be, just know that reporting can help you. It can help your family if you have siblings. It can keep you, it can get you into a safe, a safer position than what you were. You know, you would be taking a, per, uh, a harmful person off the street, you know, reporting can can help a lot, a lot of people than just yourself in, in the long term, you know. But if you are scared, you know, try to seek refuge in a person that you can trust to explain it to you and maybe even go report it with you because that is a very traumatic thing. It's traumatic physically, mentally, in every way, that is one of the worst things that a person can go through. So just breathe, know it wasn't your fault what happened, and just try to find the solutions to the problem instead of just staying in, you know, why did this happen to me? You know, in the, what, in the blaming mindset and just try to go more towards the, solution and what she could do from that point on. Wow. And that could not have been said any better. And I thank you, Emerald, for really putting your heart out there to those who may feel that they're afraid to report because you're right. You, we, we do need to look at it from both sides. You know me, I'm the aggressing, 
uh, Sagittarius. So I'm going to be like, yeah, let's go get them. You know, let's go. But you're right. There are some people who feel like, no, I have to be here for my children. I have to be here for, you know, um, he's taking care of everything financially. He's taking, uh, you know, he has all the the money. And so it's very difficult at that time to go. But there are people that you could call. You can call your local 211 and just share with someone in the domestic violence um, hotline exactly um, what's going on and be anonymous just to get it off your chest so you can, can get a little bit more power that you don't know you possess at that point. You know, anyone who's going through the abusive tendencies um they they do um one one of the statements says that they do feel less than or inferior because that perpetrator has made you feel that way but i don't believe r kelly was that type of man i really and truly don't because more women would have been coming forward long before a docuseries stating that this was going on long before 2008 trial that this was going on you know um it, 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 it just really and truly hardens my heart about how people will do anything for the love of money, you know, and that's what I was saying to you earlier about how I believe this is nothing more than Hollywood's way of making money during screen, streaming because none of this stuff was going on. All these celebrities from Will Smith to Jada Pinkett to uh, R. Kelly to... Amber Heard and Jay, um, Johnny Depp, all these people are getting, you know, all of this attention because they're going through something traumatic. Is this just a traumatic syndrome time to where the universe is just unleashing and just like giving the world an enema and it's all flushing itself out? I mean, why is everyone going through something? Or is it because we are regular everyday people in the end? I feel like it's both. <laughs> I feel like it's both. It's the enema and that we're our regular people. Because we are. We're all from a vagina. We are all from, <laughs> we're all the same in a way. We are all human. We all have red blood, you know, we're all connected in the circle of life. <laughs> yes, yes. And so, I mean, yeah, it could just be the, the the media doing their own thing, but I really feel like, I feel like Amber, okay, for example, Amber Heard and Johnny Depp would be going through the same thing with less media coverage, with no, no media coverage, if they were just a wife and a husband that went through, that's going through a a, a divorce or something, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's and, just magnified and, because it's them, huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, yeah, I get that. I get it. Yeah, my commenters, I know they're saying some great things. They're They're saying some really great things. And I just wanted to pre-record the premiere um, because there's certain things that I specifically want to talk about and I want to give Rob, Robert Sylvester Kelly the utmost respect. And so I do have to screen uh, people who come on who are invited and I screen the interviews and all that. But I'm so grateful that you did take the time, Emerald, to come on here. And I remember... You were on Emerald Mystery Radio before your voice even changed. I think you were the youngest YouTuber that ran a real live conscious aware um, program every Sunday, you know, and and to just see how you've grown and see how you, you know, do your comment commentaries. It has helped me over here with our Kelly Appeal TV. So I just wanted to say thank you. And for all my commenters, please go over to Emerald Mystery Radio and check out Sky and Wisdom from back in the day. <laughs> I mean, back in the day. Yes. So would, would you like to say anything else to um, those who are listening Yes, thank you so much. I, I enjoy 
Watching R. Kelly and Phil TV, one of my favorite pastimes while I'm working, while I'm exercising. Thank you so much for having me on today. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Awesome. So I will now um, move into the exercise part of the conversation because, you know, you had a, a little scared there for a minute. Um, but now you're back up and you're healing yourself. And this is what I was saying about, if you don't mind me talking about it, the healing of, of the body, the mind and the soul to let people understand that they are the most important person in their own lives. Because how can we be there for anyone else if we're sick, if we're down? You know, Robert Sylvester Kelly was there for everybody all that free time. But now that he's, you know, sitting down and really going over his life, who's there for him now? You know, are we really there for him? And so I want to talk about the health avenue of how health is very important. So your exercising routine, do you have any suggestions that you can give us to start with? Um, <laughs> well, walking, walking is good for everyone, I feel. Um, walking is something, it's low in fat, or what is it, low cardio, but at the same time, it still gets you, you know, up and active and out there, and plus it's good for fresh air, so that's what I do, that's mm -hmm. what I'm doing right now, just walking and just dance. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <Too many things. laughs> Right, right. And so I think that, um, you know, a lot of times when people are going through stress, like I know there are a lot of R. Kelly uh, supporters here on the channel that really and truly they 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 honor everything that people put out there about Robert Sylvester Kelly. And a lot of it is mental. Um, a lot of it is information that you've heard for the first time and they're a little bit frustrated about it. They don't really want to hear it, but they listen to it anyway, just so they can expand their consciousness. But, you know, that's why I try to keep everything as positive on this channel as possible. Even when I'm going through the um, concepts of the criminal justice statistics and different things like that, I know that weighs heavy on their mind because they're like, oh my God, what's going to happen next? And, you know, just being, but then there are a lot of prayer warriors that really and truly have Robert Sylvester Kelly's freedom at heart. They can't wait. They keep pushing out positive. I use it as an influence to keep people's mo uh, motivation strong. And so I just wanted to say to you that we're all going through something and and it's about healing from within and knowing that this too is going to pass because Robert Sylvester Kelly is coming home. And when he comes home, we need to be ready for him because there are a lot of things that we're going to have to share about the journey and listen to him because this time he's coming out and he's coming out with more wisdom, more knowledge and understanding. You know what I mean? And, um, and I believe everybody's just in that whirlwind where they think that, um, how can I put it? They feel that streaming has taken a lot of money out of individuals' pockets. So everyone's able to be and do and have anything they want on this, on this social media platform. You can be a dramatic uh, inspiration. You can be... Uh, a makeup artist, you can be someone who teaches art, you know what I mean? All online. And that's very vital. So I want everyone in the listening audience of R. Kelly Appeal TV to know that this is a hopeful channel. And even with statistics that scare us, even with the appeal processes that we don't know what's going to happen in the end, we have to stay motivated. Right, Emerald? Yes. Right on. <laughs> right on. And, and you know, I mean, so yeah. So I thank you so much for joining, liking, commenting, subscribing to this podcast. And um, as we say all the time, back in the day, we used to say, what's uh, Emerald? 
stay natural. <laughs> yes, yes. But yeah, go out and check Emerald Mystery Radio blog. It's been many, many, many years. I mean, um, but we did have some conscious awakenings that was going on and taking place in all of our lives. And and now we've come out of so many different changes and challenges, but we're still here being regular, doing the same thing we've always done. And you will find hope there. Um, that's where we were moving from Christianity to consciousness, conscious awareness. And now we're moving into universalism and this is dynamic. It's dynamic. It's going beyond what we know and are comfortable with that still says the same thing. The moral values that were printed in the biblical context of the Bible is the same thing that we're talking about on the conscious aware side. It's just in a different format. So we thank you. And as always, keep it 100 and we'll see you next time.